Hello, and thank you for your interest in the topic of content-based promotion of emerging outdoor tourism destinations. Over the next 60 minutes, we will look at the challenges of many emerging destinations when it comes to being seen on international markets. And I will show you how you can use an outdoor tourism platform like Outdoor Active to promote both your region and your own services and offers to travelers from all over the world. This workshop was developed in cooperation with German development agency GIZ as part of our Open Tourism Data Initiative for Emerging Destinations in Southeast Europe, a project designed to increase the visibility of the Western Balkans as an outdoor tourism destination. But you will see that the challenges and solutions are quite universal to many emerging outdoor tourism destinations around the globe. My name is Simon Reuter, I'm a research manager for Outdoor Active and I look forward to sharing this approach with you. So what are we going to look at in this digital workshop? First, we will take a quick look at the challenges emerging outdoor tourism destinations face when trying to make their offers seen on the international markets. Then we will get a better understanding of how outdoor tourism platforms can bridge the gap between you, the service provider or destination manager, and the travelers you want to attract. And finally, I will show you how you can use the Outdoor Active platform to create and manage stunning content that will inspire and inform your visitors of the future. What's important to know? All of what I show you today can be done completely free of charge. This is something you can do to massively increase your visibility without any additional budget or payment. So let's go. I want to start by telling a quick story that in one way or another, I'm sure you are familiar with. Meet Ali. Ali is a local tourism service provider. Let's say he runs a small guest house and offers guided tours in the hills and mountains surrounding his home village. The area is perfect for outdoor activities and Ali knows how to make sure that his guests have an amazing, authentic experience. Ali loves his beautiful region and he wants to share it with the world, but the problem is that it is not yet a famous destination for tourists, especially not on the international market. This is problematic because Ali needs to make some money with his business if he wants to survive. Now let's go to a different part of the world. This is Anna. Anna loves to travel and she loves to be active in nature. She's an adventurous person and when she travels she likes to go hiking, cycling, mountain biking, climbing, river rafting and so on. Most importantly, Anna wants a unique experience that she will remember, something she can tell her friends about. Ideally, she wants to travel off the beaten track to places that are not overcrowded with tourists where she can have a true local experience. So in a way, these two are a perfect match, right? Ali and his destination have everything that Anna is looking for. The problem is there is a good chance that Anna doesn't even know Ali and his region even exist, or at least that this is a good place to travel to. Because when Anna is sitting at home trying to decide where to go for her next trip, she is met with a ton of information, advertisement and inspiration about adventure travel destination. Now, let's say she goes to Google and searches for the best hikes in the world. She will get a lot of results from travel blogs and online magazines offering her inspiration about where to travel for some good hiking. I did what Anna did. And I went to Google and I googled best hikes in the world and the first search result was this website. An article by online travel magazine Road Affair offering a list of the 50 best hikes in the world to put on your bucket list. I read through the list and I wrote down the country each of the presented hikes is in. Then I put that list into a word cloud generator to illustrate which countries get mentioned the most. The bigger it appears, the more often the country was mentioned in the article. Now, what do we notice when we look at this result? First, apparently, the best hikes in the world, according to the article, are limited to just 28 countries. And most of it appears to be in North America, Australia, New Zealand, and the Alps of Europe. What is most striking is what is not on that list. There is not a single country from Eastern Europe or the Balkans. 
Very few countries in Asia, even fewer in Africa, and literally just two in all of Latin America. Even though South America is home to the Andes, the world's longest mountain range. And now if you take a look at the other hundreds of articles published online on where to find the best hiking destinations, the picture looks very similar. So from that, I guess we have to say there's just no good hiking in the places that are not part of this list, right? Of course there is. But it appears that travelers end up finding inspiration and information about the same well-established outdoor tourism destinations over and over again. So could it be that regardless of how great all of these destinations are, that some outdoor tourism destinations simply have a lot more visibility than others? Why could that be? Well, one answer, of course, is money. The National Tourism Agency of Switzerland, for example, spent no less than 94 million euro on tourism marketing for Switzerland as a destination in the year of 2021 alone. And that is only the marketing budget on a national level, not including all regional and local destination management organizations and all private sector marketing. With this kind of budget, you can pay for a lot of visibility. One of the biggest challenges we have in terms of promoting emerging destinations, especially in poorer countries, is that there is very often a lack of functioning destination management organizations, in short, DMOs. DMOs can theoretically exist on all sorts of levels, from the national level all the way down to municipality level or even for just one specific site or attraction. One of the main tasks of a DMO is to market and promote their destination to visitors, to make sure the destination ends up in these online articles, travel guides, etc. But now, what do you do if your region or even your country doesn't have a DMO? Or if it is so poorly funded that it does not have the capacities and no chance of ever competing with Switzerland and other well-established destinations? A lot of individual stakeholders usually end up just doing their own marketing efforts, but unfortunately, this is in most cases not very successful. Sure, someone like Ali can build his own website, a Facebook page, an Instagram channel, and so on. But try Googling something like guided hiking tour. You end up with over 42 million results. So unless someone specifically searches for Ali's services, in the very destination that he operates in, a traveler like Anna will most likely never find out about Ali's offers. So in a way, these traditional marketing channels and tourism, guidebooks, travel magazines, online blogs, advertisement, they all fail to bridge the gap between emerging outdoor tourism destinations and its stakeholders on the one side and the traveler looking for authentic experiences on the other. And this sort of leads to a vicious cycle. Your destination has a lack of visibility on the international market. This obviously leads to a lack of international visitors, which means there is not enough money flowing into your destination. So to develop new offers and build better infrastructure for tourists in the destination is not feasible. And that means that even if travelers end up in your destination, there is a lack of infrastructure and offers for them and they will most likely not become proud ambassadors of your travel destination. That's a huge bummer. But this is where outdoor tourism platforms can actually make a huge difference. Because in many ways they function very differently from traditional online and offline communication channels. Let's take Outdoor Active as an example. We are an online platform that allows people to find, plan and navigate all of their activities in nature. Hiking, cycling, mountain climbing, horse riding, even water sports like white water rafting or kayaking. Our users can also track their activities while on the trail and even share them with the community afterwards by creating their own routes. routes. And, and there's a lot of them. Currently, Outdoor Active has over 13 million registered users and over 60 million people visit our platform content every single month. And these users aren't just anybody. They are people who love to be active in nature, who love to travel for that reason, people like Anna. So what makes an outdoor tourism platform like Outdoor Active different from other communication channels 
is that they are at least partly based on user-generated content. Everybody can contribute and share inspiration and information about places um, with the community. The internal logic and the ranking mechanism of content on the platform is based on algorithms rather than marketing budget. You do not need to pay to get your content on the first page. It just needs to be good. At the same time, these platforms offer a very intuitive user experience. So people like to really interact with the content. And most importantly, all of the content is available through the same channels. It's not like Switzerland gets a prime spot in their own platform. Your content, content from your region, will be visible to the same users as Switzerland's. So in a way, outdoor tourism platforms like Outdoor Active level the playing field on the international market. That means a local stakeholder like Ali or his friends at the regional DMO, if there is one, can directly contribute content to the database, hiking trails and cycling routes, points of interest in the destination, but also hotels, restaurants, local events, and even his own offers like guided tours. For Anna, Ali's region used to be kind of a blank spot on the map. She didn't even consider it a place worth visiting. Now she can see at one glance that there are so many reasons to visit. Awesome trails, beautiful sites and attractions to explore, maybe a guided tour with Ali and the kind of authentic local experience she is looking for. Anna finds the adventures she's looking for because Ali has a channel through which he can directly reach her. The platform connects them rather than dividing them. And the good thing is, once Ali's content is published through the platform, there are multiple channels through which travelers will end up seeing them. For example, if you Google something like hiking in Bosnia, the first result that comes up on Google is a page of the Outdoor Active Travel Guide. This is a fully functional virtual travel guide that automatically showcases all of the content from any given region in the world, including Ali's, if that was his home region, of course. So naturally, you're going to have a lot of reach with this. And I want to give you two examples. This is a small destination in Western Germany that has published 51 routes, most of them hiking and cycling, through the Outdoor Active platform. Just within the one year of 2021, this generated their content a total of 1.97 million T's of views, meaning that the content was shown to 1.97 million users. Content created by the destination received a total of 118,000 page views, meaning a user actually visited the content and interacted with it. There were even over 32,000 clicks registered, meaning that a user interacted with the content more deeply. How long do you think it would take you to get 118,000 people to look at your social media posts and to get a 32,000 likes? And this even works for offers like guided tours and travel packages. Here's the example of an adventure tour operator that has published 171 offers through our platform. These offers were shown as teasers over 31 million times in just one year. Over 12,000 times were these offers viewed in detail and over 2,000 times a user clicked on a booking link forwarding them to the tour operator's website. If you look at that from the perspective of a destination, the possible impact is huge. If one stakeholder uploads, let's say, five routes to the platform, and each of them create 1,500 page views in the first year, that means some 7,500 travelers might see local content from the region. Now, if not just one, but five stakeholders upload and publish five routes each, you end up with 25 published routes and possibly over 37,000 page views in the first year alone. What does that mean for you if you are, for example, a local tour operator? Let's say you put in the effort of creating and publishing a total of 10 hiking routes. And let's say it takes you about two hours to create one route. So the total effort for this is 20 hours of work. In each of those routes, you include information about your guided tours and a link to your business. If now each of these routes is seen by 1,500 users in the first year, you may have reached up to 1,000, uh, sorry, up to 15,000 travelers with this content. And even if just 2% of them are inspired to travel to your region, that means you have generated 300 new tourists to your destination. And now let's say that just 2% of those 2% end up clicking on your business link and book your guided tour. That means you have won six new paying customers. 
And it's not like your content will disappear after a year. It stays online and it keeps being seen by travelers. So this kind of reach keeps repeating year after year and all of that for the effort of just 20 hours. If you keep creating content like this, just for 20 hours every year, your content, content might reach up to 15, sorry, up to 150,000 people over the course of five years. So this will almost certainly inspire hundreds of travelers to visit your region and can easily bring you dozens of new paying customers. Our vision is to make sure that emerging outdoor tourism destinations get the visibility they deserve so that all travelers looking for authentic outdoor experiences can find them all over the world. And by contributing your content to the platform, you can make that happen. Anna will love that, that's for sure. Okay, so we have established why openly available outdoor tourism content matters and what impact it will have. Now, you probably want to get started and begin digitizing content. So over the second half of this webinar, I will show you what good content looks like and how you get your organization and your content onto the Outdoor Active platform. When we create and publish outdoor tourism content, it is important to think of it from the perspective of a user. What does someone like Anna need? Any good content will be a combination of two things, inspiration and information. Why is that? First, you want to inspire Anna to travel to your region and to pick that specific activity. However, once she has decided on one or more activities, like let's say a hiking route, that she wants to do, you also want to make sure that she is well informed so she can find the way, not get into any dangerous situations and will know how to prepare for and behave on the way. So here are some must do's, things you should do when creating outdoor tourism content. The first thing people usually look at are images. Images have the power to inspire us. They make us feel like we are already on the trail, that we are there. So it is important that any content you create, no matter if it's a hiking or cycling route, a point of interest or an offer for a guided tour, it has to come with inspirational photos. They don't need to be professionally produced. Most smartphones know it nowadays take good enough pictures to give the user an idea of how stunning the region is that you want to promote. However, images are not only there for inspiration, they also give the user an impression of what they can expect in terms of terrain, difficulty and character of the tour. A point of view shot of the trail, like in the picture on the right hand side, gives the visitor an idea of the type of trail. The mountain biking picture at the bottom shows a steep, muddy single trail. A user will now right away that this is a difficult trail that requires a certain level of technique to navigate. Usually, as a rule of thumb, it's best to have an inspirational, beautiful picture first and then a selection of 5 to 10 pictures that are both inspiring and informational so the user gets the whole picture, literally. Catchy titles are a great way of getting a user's attention. Remember, a user will usually look at a bunch of content from any given region. So if your title stands out, so does your route, POI or activity. If you create a hiking route, for example, and it is on an officially marked trail, you should include the name of the trail, but why not add a little addendum as in the example of the West Highland Way, Scotland's first long distance hiking trail. That sounds cool. If you upload a hiking tour that leads to a certain summit, put the name of the mountain in the, in the title and give it a very short but appealing description on the terrain or route, like in the example at the top, over snowy slopes to Bistra Peak. Super poetic. Once you've inspired the user to click on your content, they will read the description next. An important note, this is not a turn by turn description of the entire route. Instead, it should give the user a good idea of the character of the route, what they have to expect when attempting this tour. On our directive, we actually use two descriptions, one very short one of just 100 characters maximum that serves as an inspirational teaser. Then it's followed by a slightly longer text that inspires the user to choose this activity while also informing them about the specific requirements and potential challenges of the route. Just note how in this example, the route is basically sold to the user, almost like an advertisement. 
exposed ridges, wild waterfalls and gentle alpine pastures. Experience the whole diversity of the Nagelflu Kata Nature Park on a challenging mountain hike which is followed by a longer text that again focuses on inspiring aspects like highlights and panoramic peaks, while also giving a lot of essential information, like the ridge traverse that is partly secured by wire ropes, the option of taking the cable car, or that it is essential to be sure-footed and have a head for heights. Again, you should lead with inspiration to grab the user's attention and continue with information to make sure the visitor knows what they must know. One of the most impactful tools of the Outdirective platform is the option to link and thus highlight points of interest to any route. This has two huge benefits. The user gets an idea of places they can visit along the trail and whether there is certain infrastructure in place, such as overnight accommodations, restaurants, shelters or freshwater springs. At the same time, this is a fantastic way of promoting local businesses and attractions. A hiker who knows that there is a cafe or restaurant waiting along the trail is very likely to plan enough time to stop during the, the hike and leave a bit of money at a local business. Simply uploading a few routes linked to a mountain hut or restaurant will very likely increase the number of visitors to this business. Most people would not travel to a certain place just to eat at a restaurant, but if it happens to be by the hiking trail where they spend their day, they would sure enough enjoy stopping for lunch or coffee. So make sure to create and link points of interest or in short POIs to your published routes. A great way to make your content more relatable is to add personal recommendations and hints. As any content you publish will appear under your name as the author, it makes the user feel like they get a personal recommendation from a friend or from a nice person they meet on the trail. This could simply make the user more interested in the activity as in the example at the top where the author recommends to join the local kids at some fun in the snow. Or it is even a great way to draw attention to local businesses again, as in a second example where the author praises the cake, buttermilk and mountain cheese available at an alpine dairy along the trail. Now, if you are a tour operator or a tour guide, you are looking to sell your offers, of course. And you can do that through a platform like OutDirective2. In a way, there is no better place to promote your offers because on such a platform, you have a perfect target group for your services. People who use OutDirective are the kind of people who do active vacations and adventure travel. They want authentic experiences in nature, and you are the one who can offer them just that. Again, it is important to find the right balance between inspiration and information, and if possible, to include a price and a link or a contact form so users can get in touch with you directly or book the services. Of course, there is no one perfect way to make great outdoor tourism content. Tastes and expectations differ. But since you are the owner of any content you create and publish through the platform, you are free to try out a few things. Through the statistics that you get for every content you publish, you get a very good idea of which content users like to click on and interact with and which one they don't. Generally, all content created on OutDirective automatically receives a rank. This rank is a kind of score that shows how well content is created. Does it have enough pictures and descriptions? Are the linked POIs? Etc. The lowest score is zero, the highest is 100. And as a local organization, you automatically receive a few bonus points so that your content will rank higher than the content coming from a normal OutDirective user. The higher the score is for any individual content, the higher it ranks on the platform, meaning it will be seen first or second, or if the rank is low, hardly ever. So make sure you always get this rank as high as possible for any content you create and publish, so it will be seen by as many people as possible. And in a few minutes, I will show you how to do that. Okay. Now that we know what great outdoor tourism content should look like, let's get started on the OutDirective platform. You have already seen the OutDirective user platform and maybe you've also used the mobile application on your phone, but for tourism businesses and organizations such as DMOs, protected areas, public bodies or NGOs, um, there is a special kind of pla platform backend or backend platform that we call the OutDirective My Business. 
Through my business, you can create and manage your content, interact with the user community and get insights into the performance of your published content. Now, to get your organization on the platform, the first step is to sign up for a free business account. To get there, simply follow this link, which you can also find in the video description. Then click on sign up now. First, you must select what kind of organization you are. In this case, I pretend I'm a tour guide, so I select guide. But whatever your organization does, I'm sure you can find it in the list. Confirm your selection and continue by entering your personal details. This is you as a person representing the organization. So you must enter your real name. Um, important note, if you already have an OutDirective account, you must use a different email address that has never been used for an OutDirective account before. Create a password and then continue. In the next step, you add some details about your business. Um, well, I'm using some fake information here, of course. Here you should use the name of the organization or company as it is officially registered. If your brand name is different, you can add that in the next step. Confirm that you're creating an account for an actual organization and move on to the next step where you can enter your brand name. If it is the same as your organization, just enter it again and click on continue. In the final step, you can check all the details you have entered. If everything is correct, confirm the terms and conditions and data processing to complete registration. Now, in your email inbox, you should now have a confirmation email to confirm your account. Please make sure to also check your spam folder in case the email doesn't show up within a few minutes. Now you have full access to your personal out directive, My Business. What's also good to know, the account you just created also serves as a normal out directive account that you can use to log into the out directive user platform on your browser and the mobile application on your phone. Any activity recorded through your phone, for example, gets stored in your account and you can access it through OutDirective My Business too. Well, now that you and your organization are on OutDirective My Business, you should first add some more details about your organization and yourself. Go to mybusiness.outdirective.com. This is your dashboard. On the top left, you can access your individual user profile representing you as a person. Right next to it is your organization profile. If you click on settings, you get a number of tabs. Start by adding more details about your organization, like a website, phone number, social media profiles, etc. You should also write a short description about who you are and what you offer. Always make sure to save when you make changes so they become permanent. Under the tab Brand and Design, you can adjust your brand name if needed and upload a logo. Under Location, you should place your business to the right spot on the map. This can be your office or the main shop that you operate out of, like a tourism information center, etc. I'm completely faking this, so I'm just using the Statue of Liberty as my home address, which it isn't, but you know. Okay, make sure to save again. Under the tab Media, you can add some pictures or even a YouTube video. These will show in your public OutDirective profile. You can always check your public profile by clicking on View on OutDirective. Finally, on the tab of Status, you should change the status of your account to Published. From now on, users can find your organization on the platform. Now you can do basically the same steps for your individual profile to add some details, upload a profile picture and the background image, etc. Once your profiles are all set up, you're ready to create and publish some content. This is done through the so-called Content Manager. You can find it either on the dashboard of My Business or by clicking on the app icon in the top right corner. The Content Manager has its own little dashboard dashboard showing you what you have worked on most recently, how much content you have created and what the reach among the community is. The content manager is where you create and manage all of your content. And there are different types of content. Most importantly, there are routes. Those are individual routes for activities such as hikes, bike rides, mountain climbs, trail runs, etc. On the tracks, you can manage any GPX tracks you have recorded through your mobile application. Points are all points of interest, including sites and attractions, restaurants and accommodations, shops and service providers, but also landscape features such as summits, viewpoints, lakes, etc. There are several other types of content available too, but we will look at them a bit later. 
For now, let's start by creating your first route. You can, of course, only manage and edit your own content. So if you are just getting started, your account will be empty for now. Start by creating a new route. The most important first step is, is always to start with the route itself, the geometry of the route. So first select the right activity from the list and give your route a catchy title. There we go. Now there are two ways to do this. If you know where the route is exactly and the paths, routes and trails are visible on the map, you can use the routing engine to create the GPX track directly in the platform. No need to record anything. Just click on the starting point, some intermediary points and finally either the end point or in case of a circular hike, close the loop. Most likely, however, you will have recorded the GPX track already while you were on the trail. In this case, click on Import GPX Track to upload the file to the platform. You can see the track on the map now, but a lot of information is still missing, like the track types. They are unknown. In many cases, your track will go along paths and trails on the map. So by clicking on Snap It, the routing engine will recognize which parts of your recorded GPX track are the same as the paths embedded in the map layer. It also smoothens your GPX track a little, which is good. If there are still parts that can't be found on the map, you can edit the track types right here manually. Just like that. This is important as it gives the user information about the kind of trails they will be on. Is it an asphalt road, a wild trail, or maybe even a Via Ferrazza? By clicking on Save, your route is saved and you can begin to edit the details. Important note, creating a new route does not mean it is published right away. You can edit the route, make changes, etc. And only when you decide it is ready for publication, then you will publish it. And of course, you can still edit it afterwards. From now on, the procedure is pretty straightforward. Work yourself through all of the tabs at the top here, from left to right, to fully create the content. Under Route, you can edit the route geometry again, if needed. Under Description, you can add all sorts of text. Start with a short, inspiring summary of the route. This should be a catchy and appealing rather than containing too much information. There's a character count right here at the bottom, helping you to get that length just right. Only if your text is as long as suggested above, you will get the full points for a high rank of your content. Continue now by adding a longer, more detailed description. Again, these are not turn-by-turn -turn descriptions, but rather a more elaborate description of the character of the activity and what a visitor should expect. Remember, inspiration and information. Check that the length of what you've written matches the suggestion above. The author's advice allows you to add a short personal note or recommendation. Like this. Safety information can be crucial, especially for visitors who don't know your region yet. Are there aggressive dogs herding flocks of sheep that a hiker should be careful of? Is the walk muddy and exposed with danger of falling? Things like that can be crucial information for a visitor. Equipment is a field you can skip if you want to, as the platform will enter an automatic list of gear that is needed for the selected activity, like hiking or mountain climbing. If you want to add something, you're welcome to do that though. Now at the name of the starting and end point of your route, so people will know where to start and where they'll end up. Only then are you invited to share some turn-by-turn -turn directions. This will help visitors to find the right route while they are on the trail. Make it as detailed as necessary, but try not to bore your reader with unnecessarily long descriptions of every turn in the paths. However, mentioning some obvious landmarks like a prominent building, rocks, frog formations, river crossings, all of that can really help a user to orient themselves while they are on the trail. Now, the internal note down here field, that's just for you. In case you want to leave a little reminder for yourself, it will never be shown to other users. So you can leave that empty or add a little note for yourself. What's important, you must always write your text in the same language that your Outdirective My Business interface is currently in. You can add translations if you want to by clicking on the translation button next to each field. If you want to create the entire content in a different language than English, you must change it for the entire interface down here at the bottom of the page. This is really important because otherwise your route will be categorized as 
English language content while it is actually, for example, Spanish. So make sure your content matches the interface language you have chosen. Super important. Even more important, before you move on, make sure you save everything. The next tab, Details, lets you add and adjust technical details of the trial. You might want to adjust the automatically cal calculated duration of the route and add the name of the highest and lowest point along the trail. Add a rating for the difficulty, required technique, overall experience and landscapes. To know which scoring applies, you can scroll to the bottom of the page, right here, and click on the instruction manual. Here you can find exact instructions so you choose the right rating. This is important so your visitors will know what to expect and whether the route is suitable for their level of fitness and skills. If you want, you can highlight a certain region in your content to promote this area further. Please select what time of the year the activity is suitable for, so visitors can easily find something for their time of visit. Now, there's also a list of additional tags that you can assign to a route, like whether it is a circular route or it takes you there and back, whether it's family friendly, a summit route, or whether there are refreshment stops available, like a cafe or a restaurant. In case there is additional literature, like guidebooks available for the trail, or at least the region, add it here. You can even add a link to a shop where it can be bought if you want to. Same goes for print maps. Now save what you have entered, important, and move on to the next tab. Under getting there, you should enter information about how a visitor can get to the trailhead. If there is public transportation, please let the visitor know. Also give instructions for drivers and details about parking. We can skip the events tab for now and head directly to the linked POI tab. As mentioned before, this is a very powerful tool that lets you promote certain points of interest through your route. You can browse the map and see whether any POIs that you deem relevant are already on the platform. Of course, you can also add new points on the map. Either you do it directly here or you go to the points section of the content manager. To create a new point is even easier than creating a new route. Simply click on create new point, select the type of point from the list and enter the, enter the details and descriptions as indicated. You must select the right location on the map, so your point appears at the right place in the map. You can search for places or navigate to the right point in the map and click on it. Save everything, as always, and continue to the tab Media. Here you can upload pictures to the platform. Make sure that you have full ownership over the pictures you upload or the permission of the photographer. Give them a title so that users know what these pictures show. If the photographer is someone else and you have their permission to publish them, you can enter their name and organization. If the pictures are yours and you want to share them with the world so that other people and organizations can also use them to promote your region, you can change the license to a Creative Commons license. This way they become open data and other people can use them too. If you leave it at the Art Directive license, nobody else is allowed to use them and you remain full copyright. Finally, when you are happy with everything you have entered, go to the Status tab. Here you can check the Art Directive rank, aka the quality of your content, and if you're happy, you can eventually publish it. Once your point is published, users can find it on the map. Also, you can go back to your route now and after refreshing the page, link the new point you just created to your route. Save your changes and move on to the Media tab. Just as I explained for the creation of points, you can now add images here too. And you really, really should. Inspirational images make your content stand out from the crowd. If you don't have enough pictures yourself, you can also browse the database of Outdirective to see if there are pictures from the region that you can link to your route as well. Once you have uploaded or selected the pictures you want, you can adjust the order of appearance by simply dragging them around. Now we have done all the steps needed for creating a great route. It's time to see how well we've done. Click on the tab Status to see what rank you have achieved with your route. Remember, 100 is the best you can get, 
Anything over 65 is considered a top route, meaning the quality of your content is assured. Well, look at that, not so bad. If you want to improve your rank, you can revisit all of the previous tabs and see if you have left out something, whether you have linked enough POIs, edited enough pictures, or whether your texts match the required length. Once you're happy with your work, click on Status again and change the status to Published. Congratulations! Your first route is online now. And that's how easy it is to create stunning outdoor tourism content. Now, if you're a tour guide or a tour operator, you probably offer guided tours uh, on the route you just published and you want to advertise them too, right? Luckily, through a platform like OutDirective, you can also publish your offers and guided tours or other events. On OutDirective, we make a distinction between offers and events. An offer is something that a vis visitor can always book, an activity that is not linked to a fixed date and time. An event is anything that is already scheduled to happen on a specific date and time, a guaranteed departure if you want so. So if Ali in our example here offers a guided tour on the hike we just created on request, if he offers it like all the time whenever tourists want to book it, then he should create an offer. If he offers this guided tour uh, or this guided hike on a regular basis, like every Saturday, for everyone who will show up or register beforehand, or if he has already scheduled this hike for three dates in spring and tourists are welcome to register so they can join, then it would be considered an event because the date and time are fixed. Both are created through the content manager right here. In our case, we will create a guided tour with a fixed departure date, so an event. Again, you start by selecting the type of activity you offer and give it a catchy title. Write a very short, inspiring summary, just like you did for the route, followed by a longer, more elaborate and informative description. Usually, you yourself should be the event organizer, but in case you're creating the offer for someone else, you can add their organization here. And the address of the meeting point, where you will meet your clients. Now you have a number of options for adding external links to your website or at least your social media profile. If you use an online registration system for your services, add a link here. If it is possible to book and buy tickets for your services online, like through Airbnb Experience or Get Your Guide, you can add a booking link here as well. You can add more information about registration or pre-booking that should be done by clients beforehand. Once you have filled in all the details you want displayed in your event, click on Save so that the event is officially created, although not yet published. You can, of course, edit all information you already entered. Using the tab Event Times, you can now add one event time, repetitions or even multiple times that same event. Like uh, a guided tour with a guaranteed departure takes place. Make sure to save whenever you have made changes. Under the tab Prices, you can let users know how much it will cost and what else they should be informed about regarding the cost of the service. Just as with routes, the tab Getting There lets you enter information about how to reach the point of departure by public transportation, by car, and where to park. Very important is the tab Location. Only if your departure is placed at the right point on the map, users will be able to find your offer or, in this case, event. You are even forced to enter a location, otherwise you cannot publish your route. So navigate to the right area using the search bar and then click on the right spot on the map. Don't forget to save! Now you can navigate to media and again upload some appealing and promising pictures to inspire users to book your services. Finally, we navigate to status again, check the rank and, if we are happy with everything we entered, publish the event. Congratulations, your first guided tour with a set date and time is now available to millions of users worldwide. Of course, you can also create any other kind of event that you organize and offer. And if your services are bookable at all times or at selected times of the year, you can publish them as well, not as events, but rather as an offer. I won't show that in detail though, because it works pretty much the same way as creating an event and knowing what you know now, you are going to be able to figure it out on your own. 
A last thing you can do now, and this is really recommended, if the event you just created and the route you published before are indeed on the same trail, you can now link the event in your route too. That means that whenever somebody checks out this route, they will be shown your guided tour as well. There's no better advertisement because a user who checks out your content is obviously interested in doing that hike. And with a linked event, whenever someone looks at the route, you basically jump out from behind the digital corner and tell them, hey, why don't you go with a guide and have an amazing experience? All you have to do is open your event or offer a math directive and copy the URL. Then go back to the route, that's best done through the content manager, and add a link to your event or offer wherever you think it fits best. Like here. Et voila! Your offer is now linked to the route you already published. Now, I know this all seems a little bit technical, but after having created two or three routes and offers or events, it is actually super easy. And the reach you can have with this kind of content is simply amazing. Companies pay thousands of euros to get a few thousand page views for their marketing campaigns. You can do that entirely for free using the reach of outdoor tourism platforms. So no matter whether you're a local tour operator or a tour guide, a local DMO, whether you manage a protected area or a hotel in nature, content such as routes, POIs, offers and events can have a big impact and help you promote your destination to a huge target group worldwide. It's not difficult, it doesn't take long, and the outcome is often really amazing. I hope you have a good understanding now of how to create and publish this kind of content and what it can do for both your destination and your individual business if you run one. You can find the link to the registration page for a free business account under the video or by following this QR code here. Thank you for watching and I can't wait to check out all of the amazing content from your region that you are going to share with a world of outdoor tourists. Now, if you are in contact with or even collaborating with other stakeholders who could use this approach, please forward this webinar to them as well or just show them how to get started by yourself. As I showed you in the beginning, the more stakeholders from a region contribute together, the more the destination as a whole benefits. Collaboration really trumps competition here. So, let's work together to digitize your outdoor tourism destination. Many thanks go out to GIZ, the German Federal Ministry for Economic Development and Cooperation, and all of our local partners in the Western Balkans, and all of the dedicated people here at OutDirective for making all of this possible. All the best, good luck with your content, and stay OutDirective.